Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. To be or not to be. That's the name of my sermon. I stole that. I stole that title. I, I heard a sermon several years ago, and uh, it's similar to the sermon I heard several years ago, from what I can remember. And uh, death. Good. All right. You know, death is, uh, especially outside of the church, death is, is, is scary. I mean, I guess de even death is scary in the church unless you study the scriptures. And uh, death is, you know, anyway, the scriptures tell us that Jesus tasted the death, tasted death for every man. You know, I don't understand that scripture. All I know is that it says that Jesus has tasted death for every man. And the only way that I can put two and two together and say that Jesus tasted death for me is because he became me. He became me. This, this is not part of my sermon. But anyway, it, it's, it's important that we understand that Jesus became a human being. And he became us. He became the human race. Because if you really look close, it says that one man can't die for another man's sins. So how in the world could Jesus die for us if one man can't die for another man? The only way that he, that is, he is capable of doing that is if he became me. He became the Lamb of God. He became my substitute. Death. Let, let's go to... Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So God did not give man a living soul. It says that he formed us out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. God took the elements of the earth and he fashioned a human being. And it, but it was a lifeless being. And it wasn't until God took, took until God it wasn't until God breathed the breath of life into man that man became a living soul. Man wasn't giving, given a soul. Man became a soul. The elements that God had put together and the breath of God put together, that man became a living soul. It, doesn't, it does not say that man became an immortal soul. It says he became a living soul, a living being. When a person dies, the soul does not go to heaven. That's what the Bible says. And I'm here to, to talk about the Bible. I'm not here to talk about what people believe. Uh, because our Bible is everything to us as Christians. So we go by the Bible. We don't go by speculation. You know, it says that, that uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1, in verse 21, it says that no temptation, that sleep deprivation. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Peter. I'm sorry, 2 Peter. Somebody's paying attention. It says, in verse 21, it says, For prophecy came by the will of man. I want to back up to verse 20. It says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. 
That means that I that whatever you think about scripture, it's okay to have discussions and talk about it. But the scripture didn't come by a private interpretation. It says, "For the prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit." So the Holy Spirit is the author of the scriptures. It's not. It was not human, and it was not. The, it was not created by humanity. It was not created by human beings. So we can trust our scriptures, and that's why we can trust that when a person dies, they do not go directly to heaven. In Ezekiel 18, verse 20, it says, The soul that sins, it shall die. Die is, uh, it, it's, there's nothing to really explain there. It says the soul that sins shall die. We may come back to that. You know, and also in uh, Ezekiel 18, verse 23, it says, Have, have I any pleasure at, at all that the wicked should die? God has no pleasure that anybody should die. God did not create us to, uh, to die. He created us to live forever. The lake of fire was created for the devil and his angels. In, in verse 28 of that same chapter of Ezekiel 18, it says, Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions, he hath committed... He shall surely live. He shall not die. Turn away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. There's a lot more to that to, to that uh, chapter, and at, at at the risk of running over, I'm not going to expand or expound on the chapter. Now, if I have time, I may come back to this chapter because it's worth talking about. The Bible says that all have sinned. So all will die. The Bible doesn't say that souls go and live in a different sphere. It says souls shall die. The Bible uses the word over 1,500 times. The word soul is used over 1,500 times. But never does it call, does it, does it say the immortal soul. What the Bible is saying is that a soul is not something you have, but it, it, the soul is something that you are. Mm -hmm. The soul, when it's uniting with the light, and I, I want to say this very carefully. This, this is a kind of a tongue twister for me. It says, the soul, when it's the uniting of a life force of God with the body is, moral, is the moral character of the man. It's who we are. It's our thoughts. It's our feelings. It's our purposes. That's who we are. The Bible says that when we die, all that ceases to exist. All that ceases to exist until when? Until the resurrection. Does the Bible say that I have a spirit? We're going to talk about that. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. When God talks about the breath, breathe the breath of life into man, that word breath is translated spirit. In other places in the Bible, it's also translated as spirit. It is the Hebrew word ru, ruah. And it means spirit, and it also means breath. You know, the reason I'm talking about this, uh, this death is it was over, it was probably about 22, 23 years ago that I started learning how to become an Adventist. And that's what made me uh, really go after Adventism because I believe. And I had been taught this all my life that I was going to burn forever in hell, and I was and I was settled with it. I was I mean I was settled. I, I you know it's like okay, 
I'm, I'm just going to live my life. I'm going to enjoy it here because I'm going to be burning forever. When I became an Adventist, that, that changed immensely. And that was one of the biggest things in Adventism was when I learned that I was not going to burn forever. I was like ready to party, ready to rejoice. Even if I go to H-E double hockey sticks, as we used to say, I'm not going to burn forever. But as time went on, I, I learned to fall in love with my Creator. Because He loved me so much, He sent His only Son to pay for my sins. But I heard a story of, of, at an evangelistic conference. I, I don't know all the details. I can't remember everything. But I remember the part that touched me the most. There was a man. I believe it was in, he was in Vietnam. Or one of the older wars. But anyway, we'll, we'll say Vietnam. He was in Vietnam. And he was a behind, a man's, behind the scenes man. Where he would go behind the scenes. And he would... Um, Put it in a nice way. He would uh, get rid of the competition. <laughs> he would he would off go behind the scene and, and get and, and anyway he he was good at it and he felt like me that when he died he's going to hell. So every person he would off would bother his conscience because he thought. I just put that man into everlasting torment. That man is in everlasting punishment. And, he, and it turned him into an alcoholic because he couldn't stand. He, 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 it's like he could hear the voices of the men he had offed. These are, these are men that, you know, they, they were the enemy. And he could, he, anyway, he ended up at, a, uh, at an Adventist uh, seminar. And of course, you know, the Holy Spirit's working on him. Well, why would you be at an Adventist seminar? And uh, they were talking about they were talking about eternal torment at this evangelistic seminar. And in the way this uh, evangelist told the story, I cried. I mean, I cried because this man was in such torment. He wanted to be released. It turned him into an alcoholic, you know, trying to escape. And that, you know, and that led to him losing his family and, and uh, you know, his friends because when you become that way, you, you kind of tend to push everybody away. And he heard, when he learned the truth, that when you die, you don't go to hell right away. And then when you do go, it's only for you know, a short period. And that relieved that man so much. He became an Adventist. He was so relieved that because he had in his mind, and can you imagine, you can't get away from your mind. He had no idea. He would believe what the preachers had told him. I, I've been to those churches when I was a kid. My grandmother drug me to the Baptist church, and I thought the man was talking to me because my grandfather used to call me a heathen. I was, I was pretty bad. And, and, and I admit, I, I, my grandfather didn't beat my fanny just, just because he was being abusive. He beat my fanny because I needed it. And, you know, my, my grandparents taught me this thing called, called respect. And, and I have respect. <laughs> and I may not have nothing else, but I do have respect for people. But, uh, you know, it, it, I, I understood stood this man's feelings because I, that, the preacher would be preaching and he would point at the whole row of people. He'd go, and you're all going to H-E double hockey sticks. And I'd go, mm. and I'd be like, I'm scared to death. I love Sunday school. It was Sunday school. I loved that. There was always cookies and Kool-Aid and stuff like that. I loved it. But when church time came, it was like, I don't want to go there. That, that guy, he's talking to me. He's talking about me. I felt like the man was talking to me. But anyway, as time grew older, and, and I didn't know, and, and I learned, and uh, I, I, I had these trainees that were under me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a structural draftsman. I make steel drawings. I've been doing it for a lot of years. And, and I was training some, some young, young kids, I want to call them children. They were, they were young adults. They were like 20. And they were talking about, they were Pentecostal. Man, Pentecostals, when they get fired up, they fired up. 
and they had me convinced I was going to burn forever, and I already knew that, but, but it, it started poking, you know, I could feel it. I could feel, you know, like, God's trying to tell me something. I went, I, I went home, my wife at the time was Catholic, I went home and she was Catholic, and I said, I need to talk to somebody. So I went to the nearest Catholic church, started knocking on the doors. I knocked on about every door, and finally somebody came out. And the guy gave me a scripture verse that, that changed my life. It gave me comfort. I didn't know what I was reading. I wish I could remember the verse. I can't remember the verse, but I was comforted <laughs> because I was going to burn forever. And then when I became an Adventist, Kenneth Cox, I believe it was Kenneth Cox, taught me, listening to the videos. After I, I studied the Baptist doctrines, I mean, intensely. And I was going to be a Baptist, and I was going to become, I was going to, I was going to be saved. I was going to repent, be saved. I wouldn't burn forever. But I still wasn't convinced in my heart that I wasn't going to burn. But when I learned that I wasn't going to burn, it, it made things so much different. Anyway, and this is why my sermon today, I thought, does, do, do people really know how to explain to their friends that what the Scriptures teach is not that you're going to burn forever? I mean, that word forever in Scripture is, is kind of a funny word. Because if you read in uh, Jonah, I can't remember what chapter, Jonah's a short book, go read it. It says that Jonah was in the belly of the well forever. Was Jonah in the belly of the well forever? No. Yeah, it, boy, could you imagine being in the belly of a well for three days and three nights? That'd feel like forever. I've been in here forever. You ever heard that saying? I've been here forever. But that, it's a, Scripture uses figures of speech like we do too. You know, we, lead, we use figures of speech like, you know, the German guy comes over from Germany, he could barely speak English, and somebody calls up, he's, at a, he's working at a restaurant, and he says, I want a pizza, and step on it. And he goes... <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, that's how that's how how language works, you know. And, and we have put things into our in, into our thoughts, and and we're the, the thought that that we got we go to hell. Oh, H E double hockey sticks. Sorry, when we go to H E double hockey sticks, the thought comes. And if you re read history, and I haven't checked this out, I'm only going by what this evangelist told me is Plato brought the burning forever in. If you go and you follow the, 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 the trail back, look up what Plato taught the human race. And that's about all I know about Plato. I've heard of the name before. Uh, so not, ta not talking about the part of our being that has personality. It's actually talking about the life-giving force that God makes. The life-giving force that God makes would, would make our heart tick, our lungs move, and our blood pump. When God formed the man out of the, bus, out of the dust of the ground, he breathed into his nostrils, and that word is pretty, that, that word's very significant. We're going to talk about that. Um, I don't have a soul and I don't have a spirit, but instead, of, instead, as a living being, I am a living soul. When, when I die, my spirit won't go to heaven. It will return to God that gave it. In Job 27, verse 3, it says, All the... All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. It's the Spirit of God, and it, it is in the nostrils. Have you ever heard of the Spirit being in, in somebody's nostrils? That, that's what the Scriptures say. Back in Genesis 2-7, what does it say? It says, God breathed into His nostrils the breath of life. So the breath and the spirit are the same thing. The body without the spirit or the breath is dead. So there are
they're one and the same. Watch what happens when the Spirit goes back to God. This is in Psalm 146, verse 4. It says, His breath goes forth. He returns to His earth. The body that was made returns to the earth. It says, In that very day His thoughts perish. So, if your thoughts perish, where do you go? Where, where are you? Asleep. When a person dies, nothing goes anywhere. The person, the person dies, and for them, that's it. He's not taking a trip to heaven are AG double hockey sticks. If anywhere he's taking a trip to the mortuary, <laughs> that's the trip. It, it's not, it, it, you know, it's, <clears throat> we, can, we can laugh about it, but it's, it's really not funny because it's heartbreaking to those that are left behind. But those that are, that go, they're, they're it, if you die, <clears throat> you don't go right to heaven. Your thoughts perish on the, the day that you die. Your thoughts perish. Ecclesiastes 9.5. I'll, I'll let y'all go to get to that one before I read it. Ecclesiastes 9.5. My time's running out fast. For the living know that they shall die. But the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Now, that, and also in, in Psalm 146.4, I read, His breath goes forth, He returns to His earth, and that very day His thoughts perish. That's the same thing as Ecclesiastes 9. 9.5 <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whoso whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So what happens to a person, according to the Bible, when they die? That's the good news of Christianity. Death is not the end. Death is not the end. For Adam, death is just a brief interlude. Can you imagine? Adam died some 5,000 years ago. He was probably close to 1,000 years old. 6,000 years when the earth was made. 5,000 years Adam died, so Adam lived 1,000 years. Almost a thousand years. 964 or something like that. I'm just guessing. 946. Oh, I missed him by 18 years. <laughs> so, when Adam fell asleep, it's going to be like he had, had, as soon as he fell asleep, he sees Jesus coming in the clouds of glory. When you're unconscious, time is irrelevant. It's amazing how you can go to sleep at night, and eight hours later you wake up. It's like, man, you feel like I put that one foot in, and I put the other foot in, and then all of a sudden you're taking that one foot out. You know, it's, it's you know. Anyway, in Psalm 13:3. Talks, it tells us what death is. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Listen, excuse me. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. And light my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. So over 50 times in Scripture, it talks, it talks, about death being asleep. I don't have all 50 
times listed here, but I do have one important verse. And it says in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Now the days of David drew near that he should die. We're talking about King David. He died. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 29. It says, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Now, is David still in that sepulchre? It says, For David is not ascended into heaven. And this was a man that was after God's own heart. It says, David is not ascended into heaven. And he saith unto himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. Now, is there, are they sitting around in heaven somewhere having a good old time? I, You know, if I was had to go to heaven... When I was younger and I had to watch my family suffer here on this earth, that would not be heaven. That would be miserable. So God, in His infinite mercy, puts us to sleep, allows us to sleep. And it's a sleep of rest. That's the body ceases to... It, the, the breath. When you take the breath of God away from the body, it's, it's, it ceases. Maybe this is metaphor. Metaphorical. Is that how you say that? Metaphorical? Maybe it means the body sleeps while the soul goes somewhere else. That can't be that way because it says that in that very day, the thoughts perish. All of his emotions in his, his love, his hatred, his envy, they all perish. They all cease to exist that very day. You cannot have the body going one way and the soul going another way. Why? Why can't you have the body going one way and the soul going the other way? Because they're the same thing. The body and the soul? The same thing? Yeah. No, the soul... The, God, God made man. God made man a living soul. He didn't give man a soul. He made man a soul. According to the biblical definition, the union of body and breath makes up a, a living being. Without the breath, he's a dead soul. <clears throat> that does not. It does not exist outside of that union. It's clear then that death is a restful sleep. Okay, let's see what the Bible says about that. And I think the, 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 the most classic example, uh, here's another scripture verse for you to write down. Um, in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 22, it says, all in whose nostrils, this is, this is during the flood. It says, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. There's the nostril thing. All that was in the, in, okay, and the other one is, uh, let's see, we've already read that one. In, Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 22, it says, Stop trusting in human beings whose life's breath is in their nostrils. Okay, parables in Scripture. Some people know this, some people don't. That God spoke to non-believers in parables. He always spoke in parables. He, he, every now and then he would pull the disciples aside and he would say, this is what the parable means. Running out of time. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go through a, a parable, one of the parables. And Okay, if you want to prove that Jesus spoke in the parables, go to, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to wait for you to go, but in Mark 4.34, 
I will read it. It says, but with, this is uh, the King James Version. It says, but without a parable spake he not unto